Hello folks and welcome to Linux for Seniors. Um, I do encourage that you subscribe because none of my videos on my new channel are more than, uh, sorry, less than two minutes. Uh, I have videos almost as long as an hour and uh, all of my videos are going to be timeline in the future where you can uh, hit stop on your player and you can see a timeline on there complete with uh, icons and uh, descriptions. But more importantly, I do encourage that you subscribe. Um, because you can also start and stop these videos as a subscriber. At least bookmark me. Or bookmark this site. I think you'll find it helpful. My previous YouTube site, I used to have over 450 videos, but that's irrelevant. It is now closed. So Linux for Seniors, I started up, um, I want to say, in the middle of February, and I've almost up to 50 videos on all kinds of subject matter. So today's video I'm going to talk about is the um, Linux Mint 21.1 Mate Desktop. I'm going to give you a lots of tips on the way. So this video will be more than two minutes. So let me first start off by giving you system information. And some of you folks uh, that are brand new to Linux or brand new to Linux Mint, I'll say welcome. Uh, but you shouldn't shy away from this box. You can do a lot of wonderful things. I'm just going to use NeoFetch to get this out of the way real quick. This is Linux Mint 21.1, the Mate desktop. Don't read too much into the hardware because I use these computers for other things. I will show you when I do the point and click software managers, uh, one command to, or to show you how to install software also if you're interested. So for you folks that are really, uh, well, scared of terminal boxes, can I break the ice with this command here? This command here, you can actually, if you know the per person's birthday and month and day, I'll give you one example, Cal space. And you use the one one for January. You can just type in Jan too if you like. Um, like 19, uh, let's say 67. If you got a person born January 1967, and that person was born on the 24th, they were born on a Tuesday. You can have all kinds of fun with your friends and family doing this. That's just one little command on a terminal. So I'm going to close this box, and I'll get back to uh, talking about installing software in terminal a little bit later. So we're going to start the tour down here at the bottom. So click that as a calendar. You can click it again to close. You can right click on the same time and date thing, hit preferences and change that from AM PM. Anytime you alter things too on your system that has numbers or stuff or even, even themes, I do suggest screenshots. And when I get into the menus, I'll show you how to put the screenshot tool actually on your panel bar and your desktop. Moving along, the volume thing. Fairly self-explanatory, but if you right-click, you can also open up the sound preference box. That'll have like your microphone and outputs. And you have the uh, wireless or, or I, I should say Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And then if you see a red dot like this one, you'll have an update and you just click it and you update it. I have a Firefox update that I need to address later. Microphone, and this is simple screen recorder that I'm recording the video. So that needs to be remaining here the whole time. So I'm going to click on this icon here called File Browser. The file browser for Mate is um, Kaja. So for your seniors or anyone, uh, well, Linux is for every age, but that's what I put in my About section. But if you need to make these larger, um, first of all, let me resize the box. There's many ways of doing this. I can go full screen too if you like. Let's do the full screen. And I'm going to use a special feature here in a second, but you can use zoom in and out to make it bigger or you can use my hidden trick that if, if some of you folks have seen this already either on my previous youtube channel years ago or this uh new new channel linux for seniors hold down your control key my left hand is on my control key and i'm holding it and i'm holding my computer mouse with my right hand because i have a scroll wheel on it i'm going to scroll up a little bit and then i'll scroll the other way I'm sorry about freaking you out, but anyways, these are tiny now. Let me scroll slowly up and get it to whatever comfortable size I feel. So right now, I'm okay with this. Let's leave it in this resize mode for a second. This comes in handy. Like, I created this wallpaper folder, and I brought in some wallpaper and photos. So if you notice there's a scroll bar here, so I can scroll up and down instead of grabbing a hold of that using my computer mouse. But I can also use my computer mouse to resize the icons. Holding down the control key on my keyboard and scrolling up, make these bigger or tinier. Scrolling up slowly to whatever thumbnail size I want. 
roughly. There are some increments, but you get the general idea. So if I like that size, I release the control key on my keyboard, and now I can scroll in the resized format. This does come in handy, folks. Or if you feel like you need to drag that manually, then go for it. I don't really use these drag bars. So you can use anything as wallpaper also. Um, so an example of that would be this weird thing here. I've shown that in my previous years. Right click, set as wallpaper. Right click, set as wallpaper. If you have any digital photos of your children or your pets or friends or nature, you can bring in digital photos in here and do the same thing. I'm gonna go find one here that I took uh, recently or maybe a couple of years ago. All right, I think that's one of mine here. Let me see what it looks like. Yeah, it's the coastline of Oregon, USA. Right click, right click on the, on the image, properties. That was taken with a DSC camera, Sony DSC, all the particulars, even the frame size. Find another one. Uh, this one here is Crater Lake, Oregon. It's a national park, Oregon, USA. You know, why do I say that once in a while on my videos? That's because YouTube is worldwide. There's a lot of people watching videos. I had a nice, uh, nice comment the other day from a gentleman from uh, South Africa that said that uh, he really likes my videos. And I like to hear those kind of comments. The negative ones I don't like to hear because, uh, anyways, it's another story. So we can set that as wallpaper. We can also look at uh, properties, image information. That's also a Sony camera. Let's try another one. One more before we leave. We'll find, uh, here's a really old one. I think this is Yosemite, California, USA. Right click, properties. Yes, that was taken with an Apple iPhone 6 back in 2017. And you can see all the particulars, size of it, exposure, aperture, did the, did the flash fire, yes or no. Well, there's too much information for some. But I just wanted to let you see this file manager can pull that in if it exists with the photo. It's just a JPEG. It's just a JPEG, as one would say. All right, so you can resize icons rather easily. So I'm gonna to point to this now while I'm at this. I made some screenshots of some things because when I get into the menus, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So again, I could resize these icons using my method or you can do it the old fashioned way, that's up to you. But I'm gonna double click on these things and uh, these were the original font sizes and these were the uh, icons in the menus here, the original sizes. I'll show you all these settings here in a second. But anytime I alter things, even the panel bar is higher than normal. And forget it. Uh, whenever you make screenshots, it saves them into this kind of format, so then you can rename them. So let's talk about the screenshot tool before uh, I get into things. So File Manager, Terminal, Firefox, and hide your desktop windows. And then I'm going to click the menu here. I added the word uh, Linux for seniors here. And I'll show you how to do something like that if you like. But I'm going to look for the screenshot tool. There's a search feature here. Type in SC. Take the screenshot, as one would say. You can right-click, add it to your desktop or panel. You can also click Show in Favorites. It's already clicked. So I'm going to turn it off, and here's my favorites, and it's not in here. So if I go back and type in SC again, and I right-click and hit Show in Favorites, now it's here. Does that make sense so far? Okay. So I'm going to type in SC again. So you're looking for this thing. And you go, okay, I want it on my panel bar. This is the panel bar. Or my desktop. Let me show you a little tip. Another tip for you folks. Drag the icon and drop it. Drag the icon down here and drop it. Now I have two shortcuts. So the one down here on my panel is a single click and that's a double click. I'll leave this one up here. Single click. Grab the whole desktop. What does that mean? Means it takes a picture of the wallpaper and my panel bar and whatever icons are on here, but not this box. Grab the window. It opens. It takes a picture of the current window. There are no current windows open. This is a. This is the tool. It doesn't take a picture of itself. So if I open up the file manager, for instance, and grab a hold of the tool and put it here in the middle, and use grab window, I'm just going to show you that it's not going to take a picture of this thing. 
And also take a look at the nice feature that Linux Mint put in there for you. It's kind of like glowing almost. There's a halo around this thing. Kind of a cool feature, I, I thought. Normally, I believe that's default, but I usually turn mine off. Pointer is the mouse pointer. And I don't use the seconds, and I don't really use any of this stuff. But I do include the border. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this box only, not the tool. And then it will give me a mini thumbnail. And where do I want to save it? I'm going to send it to my desktop or save it to my desktop just to let you see it. Okay. And there it is. That's why I advocate screenshots for everything. We can leave that here if you like. I'll just drag it and leave it there. We can dump it in the file manager later. So if I wanted that screenshot, technically I can just do it this way. My folder screenshots that I made is in here. I can just do that and I'm done. Okay, so let's talk about this. I'll talk about the settings for all these icons in a minute because they're larger than normal. Okay, you got your computer thing. It shows you your devices. In my case, it's a solid state hard drive and this is an installed copy. This is not our live copy. Home folder, network, desktop, and trash can are self-explanatory. Software manager is all point and click. If you're not that familiar with the software manager, you can make this full screen if you want. You can do searches and you can do point and click stuff. You can do categories. You can click on things to and then install them. Let me make this a little bit smaller. Let me resize the box. That screenshot's a little blurry. Let's take a look at the Midnight Commander. It's a little bit sharper. Anyways, hopefully this is big enough for you. Big old installation key. If I were to go to the accessory box, I, I was there, and I see a green check mark, that means it's installed. Just right on top of my head. I can see a launch key and a remove. That means it's installed. Okay, so you can search for things. So if you're looking for like GIMP, that's like Photoshop. Um, you actually come up with two versions and you can actually just click one and actually switch to this one. So GIMP is like Photoshop, as I pointed out, and it's a fairly small download for the system package from Linux Mint. If you click the FlatHub version, it's a lot larger. So 1.1 gigabytes, 3.4 gigabytes on your disk. The reason Flatpak software is larger because it's all self-contained software. Flathub ORG is where that stuff comes from. So again, you can click point and click. Very easy to do. It's done by category. You can do searches. So this is uh, called Mint install. That's the version number. And we just call it Software Manager for short. This does not tell you how many pieces of software there is. So I'm going to use a different tool for that. And what is and Mr. Senior? Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to close that earlier. So now you can see the screenshot all by its lonesome. So we can move that if you want. Stick it over here if you like. So um, I'm going to open up Synaptic Package Manager. Normally when you do updates, you'll also see the same dialog box. And I'm going to put in my password. I'm not really going to get into details in today's video. Um, I'm just going to talk about the number of packages listed number of packages, pieces of software applications, 72,000 plus and 2,000 plus are installed. Your software is coming from where? They are called repositories. That's where the software is uh, stored and it downloads to your system. The main ones are coming from Mint and the base packages from Ubuntu because this system is an Ubuntu Debian based system. Ubuntu is based off of Debian and Linux Mint is based off of Ubuntu and Debian. Does that make sense so far? Or you can just call it Ubuntu based. All right. This is the Debian logo. This is Synaptic about. And here's your quick legends. If you see stuff in here, if you're playing, it means it's installed. You can also do searches. I usually use the name instead of the description and name. If I know the name of the package, I usually just put it in. I'm sorry, misspelled it there. So if you know the name of the package, then you need the correct spelling and it usually finds it immediately. And then you can uh, click that box to install it. It's an automatic wallpaper changer. I'm not gonna give you the screenshot. If it needs uh, additional um, software, you just mark it. If you do the screenshot, it'll be a full size screenshot. It's very huge. You can also use for, search for a variety in the software manager, but I don't believe it has a screenshot on that one. It does in this one though. 
So again, if I change my mind and want to go to sections all, now you can see that number again. Now I'm going to close that and move on. And uh, oh, I was going to show you a quick way of uh, doing a software install. So let me just show you the example. I'm not going to perform one. So this is a typical install command, sudo apt install vlc. A vlc is the name of the application. Here's the name of the application simple screen recorder that I'm recording this video. And yes, I did use terminal to install that. But let me break it down for you to make it simple. sudo just means super user do. It gives me elevated privileges to do something. I put a space and then apt space install is the literal command for installing something. And then you put another space and the name of the software or package is VLC. And that one says simple screen recorder. And you remember I performed that. This, I'm looking up somebody's birthday, Cal Jen 1967 or whatever year you want to put in. You could have also substituted the month one for January. Three, three letters for the month. So uh, May would be A-Y for instance. Okay. I can also do that and paste the command. Click on the right end and then go in here and actually delete that. And I'll put in. So if you have somebody born May 1988, just having some more fun with terminal folks. You, your friend was born in uh, May of 1988 and they were born on the 28th. They were they were born on a Saturday. Have some fun with your friends and family. I can guess what day of the week you were born on, just because I know your birthday. Never mind. Let's move on. So that was uh, installing software and a cute little command for terminal. So you can, uh, again, click up terminal here, lock the screen, log out, and this is a multifunction key for your restart and suspend. I'm going to hit cancel. And uh, you have all applications A through Z and then categories. I'm not going to use the scroll wheel. I'm sorry, the scroll bar. I use the scroll wheel on my computer mouse when I'm doing this. And I'm just going to scroll to let you see what's in here. There are quite a few pieces of software. Um, you have an image writer if you want other uh, Linux distributions in an ISO format. That's a very simple tool. And you can also clean up your USB sticks. You can also format USB hard drives. Be careful with that tool. It's very simple to use though. I'm sorry, that's the writer, pardon me. So let me go back and uh, find that tool. The uh, stick formatter, sorry. So you would click on your USB stick or USB connected hard drive and you can format it in these file formats. You can also use uh, GNOME Disk Utility also. I have a dedicated video, almost 40 minutes long if you wanna see that one. Okay, where did I leave off? I was under, yeah, I left here. Now, Warpinator is used, uh, it's designed by the Linux Mint team. It's an application that is also available for other Linux distributions, quite a few, as a matter of fact. It's also, I think it's available as Flatpak software, but I, I'm not positive. Uh, but anyways, Warpinator is used to share files on your local network. And when you have it installed on another uh, machine, whether it's a Mint or another Linux machine, uh, you can share files between the two systems. It's pretty easy to configure. And that tool has an actual um, tool to, uh, I'm just going to let this thing open and set code. This goes to the preference box. And let me just open up the manual way. So uh, on this last tab here, you'll notice that under connection is update your firewall rules. Your firewall can be closed. Your firewall is located in settings down in um, here and it will auto configure it okay it, it opens the rules if you're using the firewall okay again local network it's just uh, the name of your computer um, this w just means wireless and usually if it's ethernet it's et something and then the the address of your computer in ip format it's actually fairly simple to use and you can share files that way um, I will be probably doing a dedicated uh, one for that. Now, Warpinator is also available for the other Linux distributions. Um, sorry, Linux Mint distributions like Cinnamon desktops. And I believe uh, XFCE also. All right, moving along. Graphics, you can install other programs like GIMP. That's like Photoshop. Internet, you can install other web browsers. 
web apps I'm just going to briefly open I'm going to delete this on purpose um, this is normally how it comes if you want to create web based icons I have an extensive video on my YouTube site look for the video for Linux Mint 21.1 Cinnamon for web apps but I will show you a quick demo so if you click the about screen you can click the website and you can find a help file in there too um, it's very limited on inf information but there is a help file nonetheless or read me but I'll show you a quick example of doing one for Amazon.com. You don't need any coding skills whatsoever. Any novice can do this. Plus, I'm going to use, uh, do I want to type the whole word? No, I'm just going to use the letter A. All right, so we're going to do um, an address. You need to type in the, the web address. You can also cut and paste these from web browsers. www.amazon.com just like you would type into your web browser, for instance. You just have to put the www dot in front of it. So you noticed it didn't populate an icon because I did a mistake and used not the period, I used another character. So I'm going to back that up and put the period. So it's dot com. Now i got an icon. Some websites um, you may have to click that and some you may just have to sign your own icon. And you can do this with any system icon, including emojis. You can also browse for your own personal folders. And you can watch my video how to do stuff like that. You can also create web-based icons for your home router. That one I have on my YouTube site and I recommend watching that one if you are wanting to do something like that. Moving along, the web category, it's just going to create another category in here and place this icon there. Not that you need to use it from that category, but I'm just telling you what that's used for. You can put it in other places if you like. I only have the Firefox web browser, not going to talk about custom parameters here. Navigation bar, yes. Private incognito window, I don't use. I'm done. No coding. I'm going to double click on this thing to test it. I read the privacy notice, get rid of it, I'm ready to go shopping on Amazon. I can even sign in. I have my browser remember login information and then close this. Providing I don't edit. If you edit that, you may have to log back in. Because that's one of those icons where it requires login information, right? If you're logging in. Or if you're just looking at it, it's no big deal, right? You can create it as many as you want in here. Do I have to run it in here? Absolutely not. It's not part of any icon. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, it's just like any icon now. Any of these things. Just type in A. There it is. Do it the old-fashioned way. Add to desktop, panel, show in favorites if, even. <coughs> if I click that, I'm sorry. There it is. Go back to all applications, show you my trick, drag it here, drag it here. This is a single click, that's a double click. I'll just stick it over here for now. Double click, still goes to Amazon.com, get rid of the show me thing, close it, and then I'll open it here. Single click. Get the idea? You can do that practically with any website. Watch my video for that if you want a dedicated one for all kinds of tips and tricks on that. Moving along, that was internet, web apps. Office, LibreOffice comes installed. Uh, LibreOffice Writer can also save Microsoft type of documents like .doc. If you do uh, open that up, type out your letter and do the save as and do the drop down. You'll see what I'm talking about. There's multiple file formats. Best price with LibreOffice is free. It's also available on Microsoft Windows. If you go to the LibreOffice website and you can download it there, and also from, um, for um, Apple Mac computers. Sound and video. I install Simple Screen Recorder and VLC. You get Celluloid and the Hypnotics TV player and then Rhythm Box. If you have folders, I'll click music for a second. So I put my music into folders. There are just songs inside of here. And uh, when you open up Rhythm Box for the first time, it imports all of them from that folder automatically. Don't have to do anything. Then you can create your playlist from there. Okay. So that's Rhythm Box. Okay. So that was that comes installed. So again, simple screen recorder and VLC. I added through terminal, but you can also add it through your software or package managers. System tools. I highly recommend that you make sure your time shift was active. Hopefully, you followed the directions when you installed the system. An activated time shift and you had a green shield and you closed the box 
and it's quietly making backups of your system, providing you stay logged into the system for more than five minutes. And um, when you need that tool is when you can't log into your system. Then you take out your bootable medium, such as the DVD or USB stick that you use to install Mate, and you'll find the timeshift utility on that stick. You open it and it scans your hard drive. You follow the, you open up the, uh, the, the application and you just click on the restore point and hit restore. In about 10 or 15 minutes, you're back to where you are. Moving along, that was the web category that created that uh, Amazon thing, and I could rename it, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave it. So the admin box, there you can see another shortcut to software manager, software sources. Again, they're coming from uh, Linux Mint and Ubuntu. Synaptic package manager and package manager are the same thing. System reports, if you wanted to uh, do it in a different way, instead of using terminal, I'm going to let this thing run. And then hopefully it's done. Hit system information, second tab. You can get motherboard information right here and model number right here. So if I were looking for my motherboard information, I was shopping for RAM, for instance. You can watch my video also for um, information on RAM. I think I did it for, I don't remember what, what distribution, but anyways, it was installing RAM. But if I was looking for any information on my motherboard, I would just right click and copy that, open up a web browser, paste that in the search field and type in the word manual right afterwards. And it'll find the manual for this, more than likely this ASUS. Or you can go to the ASUS website and still use this in their search field. There's a wealth of information in here. So um, pretty much a lot of the information that you want in here. Also, you can use another command for this. This also shows you the repos. A repos uh, definition or repositories just means where the software is coming from. They're also used to install in your software manager and also through terminal. This is where the, the, where the stuff is coming from. If you want to see this in a different light, my YouTube videos that I used to produce uh, three or four years ago, I used to use this pretty heavily. And I was showing this command, it's called the INXI command. And the switch that I'm using, this dash FXZ, it just doesn't show personal information. So let me make this full screen. And uh, basically what we're looking at, actually this is probably bad. So why don't I just resize that a little bit. And uh, what I'm looking for is uh, the kernel information. This is the desktop. This is Linux Mint 21. This is an Ubuntu based system. And my motherboard information is right here. And this is the model. Right click and I can also copy and paste that into a web browser. So there's two ways of doing that. Let's move along. Where was I? Um, under admin, I think. Yes. So that was uh, system reports. Time and date thing. Again, you, you'll have to unlock that to change the time and date. And um, users and groups, you can also find that in their control center. And preferences. So a lot of stuff in your preference windows. Control Center, um, Backup Tool, Driver Manager, Login Window, Add Printers, Software Manager, Software Sources, Synaptic Package Manager, another shortcut to, well, another shortcut to uh, Software Manager, System Report, Synaptic, Time and Date, Adding Users, Update Manager, you can also find that downstairs. Let me make this larger. Um, the GNOME Disk Utility, I do have a dedicated video on my YouTube site if you want to know how to use this thing. Um, just look for a video for the um, partitions or, or disks. Um, there will be a tool there. Uh, it's in two parts. One discusses this tool. The other one discusses Gparted in full detail. Uh, where did I leave off? Uh, disks. Okay, displays. If you're going to alter displays and refresh reads, I highly recommend screenshots and more importantly when you hit apply I also recommend that if the screen goes black for more than five seconds is allow it to time out and go back don't turn off your computer that's the worst thing you can do no my monitor is not 72 inch but it is a 43 and it is a smart TV and I have three monitor uh, three computers hooked up to it I switch between the three then I can also use Netflix and 
um, Prime Video if I want to. So my monitor is pretty versatile. I have a video also on that. If you're curious about hooking your your um, laptops, uh, not laptops, console computers especially, up to uh, flat screen monitors. And keep in mind you can also watch this video on your big smart TVs if you have the YouTube app. Remember, Linux for seniors. Just look that up. Keyboard, keyboard shortcuts, uh, self-explanatory, some mouse properties for acceleration and stuff, power management. Again, if you alter anything, screenshots. And uh, sound, you can also get the sound information down there. Oh, my left Warpinator on, so let me close it. Um, and then speaking of Warpinator, your firewall is here. And uh, it is GUFW. That's the name of the firewall. It's GUFW. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, if you activate that thing, if you're using Warpinator, it will uh, populate the rules in here. If you uh, tell it to do it, otherwise you it doesn't do it. And when you have the firewall turned on, it will deny all incoming file transfers. Keep that in mind. You need to have rules open for Warpinator to work. If you're using Samba, you need to write your own rules. Okay. That's the firewall. It allows outgoing from your web browsers, for instance, and updates and stuff. But incoming files is going to reject unless you write rules. Hopefully that was clear. This normally is, comes deactivated. The firewall. Network proxy, not going to talk about appearance. If you do any of this stuff, screenshot time. Again, screenshot. Grab the current window. Doesn't matter if this is on top or not. It's never going to take a picture of itself. So you can actually do it to the side if you feel more comfortable. But if you change the theme, it's always a good idea to have a screenshot of anything. And now you can see where the fonts are. And now I'm going to minimize this for a second and bring up my screenshot that I did earlier to compare apples to apples. I stuck it in, uh, I made a folder earlier. And before I did anything to the system, I made screenshots. And here's what I'm dealing with here is fonts. So my font screenshots, which I renamed, was originally 10. This was a 12. So let me show you what the original one looks for your system. Take a good look at the menus and the size of the text and the text in here. Now I'm going to change this to default. It's very simple to do. You do plus or minus or your drag. You can also try some different type of fonts. Screenshot if you're going to do that. That's the default font. Everything just got smaller. Okay. Done. Done. Control center. Okay. So um, where did I leave off? That was appearance, fonts, comp whiz, not going to talk about desktop settings. You want to add some additional icons on your desktop, like computer, home, and network, and trash? You can do that. And um, where am I at here? That was desktop input. Languages, I think, are fairly self-explanatory. Uh, is there another icon here? Yes, there is. Uh, the main menu is more for advanced users, but I will show a video way down the road for this, for customization, if you're curious. Pop-up, notifications, not going to talk about in QT settings, not screensaver. Do a screenshot of the screensaver settings before you alter anything in here, and there's lots of cutesy little screensavers. Uh, welcome screen is the welcome screen. You're going to see this every time this your computer reboots unless you turn that off. Okay. Windows, uh, I'm not really going to cover that much, but if you alter anything in here, please, of course, make screenshots. So what else is in here? Well, there's the about, assistive, and again, make screenshots if you alter stuff, if you start going into these screens. Preferred apps, uh, I think most people can figure that out. And startup apps, I really, not for new users, I don't recommend um, editing these things or turning things on and off unless you know what you're doing. All right, so you see these icons and you see the how large this favorites is compared to the other ones, right? How did I achieve any of that? So first of all, I'm going to open up my screenshots to show you the references. Okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to resize this box slightly. I'm try to drag this over here. 
and we're going to talk about the uh, menu properties this one right here so I'm going to right click preferences right click the mint icon preferences okay there's where the text Linux for seniors came in all right under appearance the default settings for your system will more likely be these numbers right here because I did a screenshot before I did this so favorites were set to 48 I changed it to 60 applications were set 22 I changed it to 30 system was at 16 I changed that to 30 and also places at 30 that is why these icons are larger than what you normally see all right so that's one screenshot where's the other one at No, I did. Did I have that one? Oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to close it and go down here for a second. So um, again, if you're, that's the screenshot. Pardon me. That's what happens when you get mixed up here sometimes because it looks exactly like it. Okay, that's the actual dialog box. So again, under appearance, that's where those numbers. You can go plus or minus, or you can click in there and put it in your own numbers. Just uh, make a screenshot before you start playing. All right, under uh, not applications, but again, you can do screenshots of this. This search bar right here, if you want it on the top, then click this right here. And now it's over here. Now I'm going to turn that off and go to the next line. And I, I mean, I could talk about all this, but I'm trying to get this thing done in a fairly expedient manner. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this box kind of closer to here and click this menu open. And I'm going to drag it a little bit farther over. A little bit farther over and I'm just trying to get you a reference point to see where the end of this window is is lined up with almost applications okay that's the standard height or the height that I currently have this set at so if I click custom height and I put in a number like 507 you can put in different numbers in here now take a look at that box it's above this so if you needed to this box larger and some of you seniors kind of like large things right then you want uh, custom height and you can crank that number and find out what the highest number you want. So the lower the number, this thing lowers. Okay, does that make sense? And that's the automatic. All right. And then if you don't want to see the items uh, in here, like um, let's say you uh, want the system, uh, you don't want it to display software manager, package manager, or any of the other ones, you can turn these off. Just be careful with the logout and the uh, quit. You know, let's not do that. So now, now you'll have only the logout. Let me turn that one off. Uh, you don't want to be doing that. If you, in case you see that, um, then um, you're going, oh, how do I, how do I turn the system off? The icons are missing. Okay, right click on the icon, hit preferences. Go down here and make sure these are turned on. Okay, now those icons are back. What I'm saying is you can turn things off. Places, places are right here. If you don't want to see that network folder, then turn it off. It's less icons, right? Right? Okay. So now you know how to edit stuff as far as turning things on. This is all point and click, folks. This is not doing any coding. It's just a good idea to find out where these things are. Okay. Uh, so I discussed the menu pretty much in detail. I already gave you the panel bar information. Right click, create folder, launchers. Create text documents without a spell checker. Remember, it's text document. Open up your terminal. Organize the desktop by name. And uh, basically, desktop background. Themes, background, fonts. Themes, background, fonts. What are the most two things I advocate screenshots with? Well, current window at least of the fonts. Also, themes. There are more themes in here. So if you have a scroll bar, you can also use the mouse to scroll with. If your theme is picked over here, do a screenshot. I'm just telling you, whatever you have defaulted on, I'm using the default. Do a screenshot before you change anything. That way you know what it was in case you uh, wanted to revert back to your previous settings. Hopefully you have subscribed. Thank you for watching, folks. Take care.